Yeah, so 10 minutes or something, a uh, short talk on building a, a web service. Or well, nowadays, you know, it's uh, more fashion to say it's a, a microservice or HTTP JSON API. So, uh, and uh, the World Cup. <laughs> yeah. So the uh, idea is to build a, a World Cup uh, web service that gives you the, the scores, the groups and teams. There are 65 games, 32 teams, and now we are in the, today there's no match in the, in the knockout. So anybody has a favorite team uh, or f f watching the World Cup? So, okay, so let's get started. Uh, sure. Yeah, okay. So to build, um, and uh, how to get started? First, you need the data. So how would you, where do you get the data? So one interesting thing is it's hard to get uh, open public data for the World Cup, but I have a little project. It's called Open Football Database. And, uh, and the Open Football Database, it has all the World Cups, but it has on the release tab, you can download a pre-built um, SQLite database that has all the World Cups. And so we are using the SQLite database as the source. And the idea is to build a JSON uh, service. And um, so here's an example of the JSON service. So it would have all the, so the JSON for the data interchange. I think everybody knows JSON. And so, so this one uh, tests the first match day, Russia against uh, Saudi Arabia. And so that's the idea to have the database and then to provide a service in Go with in JSON. So let's get started. So how would you build it? So that's was that how we get the data. And the first step is um, to map the tables in the database to Go structures. And so in this case, um, let's say we have the event, the World Cup, and then the teams, and all the old strings, so there's no magic. But the first part, if you use JSON, Go has the convention that uh, if you have a field that has an uppercase letter, then it's automatically public. And so usually if you have a structure, you want all your fields to be public. But the convention, if you've seen in JSON, is that your your columns are lowercase. And so what, what can you do to, uh, to map it to lowercase? So in Go, you can use annotation. So in this case, if you see the, the JSON team and JSON event struct, it uses the annotation to map the, the names to lowercase. And so the first step is to do a database query and so that's uh, later we can discuss or ask you know, what kind of database library you're using. So in this example, I'm just using all the standard uh, Go libraries and not any you know, advanced uh, extra fancy uh, libraries. And so uh, I'll do the S SQL query. And so the SQL query is just you know, uh, getting the getting the e event and uh, the season. And for the SQLite, so there is a, a package on GitHub, Go SQLite. It actually includes, because the SQLite database doesn't have a server, it's like a, a C library. So if you download it, it actually, you need a, a, um, a C compiler. So it has the, the Go interface, plus it compiles this, uh, it compiles the SQLite library itself too. So it might take, you know, a little uh, more than a couple of seconds. But that's the only uh, external uh, library using, and it has the standard SQL. The Go has the, in the database SQL module, the standard interface. And so now to fetch, to fetch the e event, the World Cup from the database, you just open the, the database, in this case, football DB, which would be a single file on your, on your hard disk. There's no server, and SQLite, and then you get the connection. 
And once you have the database connection, you do a query, and the query was the SQL string. So I get the information about the World Cup, and I, it, it, you get back a, a list of rows from a table. And if you want to have more, uh, you, in the example above, if you want to have more tables in one row, you just join the tables. So standard SQL procedure. And you get the, the, the rows. The, but in, in, that's the hard part. In, in Golang, if you have a script language, you know, you would be done. But in Go, you have to do it manually to map the structure, the data rows to the, the structure. So you've seen the, the event structure and the team structure. So you have to manually loop over the rows and then you scan. And in scan, you pass in the, the fields. In this case, key and title would be the World Cup and then uh, to fill up the data structure. So now I have, I have the, um, the rows in, in, in Go structures. And if you're new to, uh, if you're coming from, from other languages, one downside of Go is, or it's the upside, the Go headline feature is the concurrency. And so if you have concurrency, there cannot be any exceptions. Because if you have you know, asynchronous, where do you send the errors and the exceptions? So the downside is, if there are no exceptions, you have to do all the error handling manually. And so if you look at this code, every, the database connection you know, might not work. Or if you do a query, there might be an error. So every call always returns the error code, and then you have to check the error. So in this case, SQL open, it gets you the, the error code, and you have to check the error code. You do the database query, you have to check the error code. And do, you do row scan, and you have to check the error code. So you know if you use a scripting language or something, you really don't care about the error, because it would throw an exception. But in Go, there, is no, there are no exceptions, so that's kind of uh, a little verbose. But that's a feature for asynchronous for the concurrent world. And so the next step is now there's the data structure, is to generate the JSON. And to generate the JSON, there's the built-in encoding. And you just uh, provide the, the data structure, and it encodes it into uh, into a, a JSON string. So there's not much magic. And the great part is if you use Go, so that's one advantage for using Go for web services. It has a built-in high-performance concurrent web server. And so to build your own web server in Go, all you have to do is to include the net HTTP module library. And that's it. And if you look at the main code, all you have to do is listen and surf. So HTTP.listen and surf starts up the web server. And for your services, you pass in the, the handle function with the, what services, what routes you support. So usually you would use a, a routing package. So in this case, I do it manually. So the, the handle function, in this case, I only have two uh, services. Or in this case, I have the, the events service. And so if there's the event service, if it's matching with the incoming uh, link, then I, I do the database query, which is the get events. And then the get events um, does already the, uh, the conversion to, uh, to JSON and it returns it, the B, the B is for bytes. And then the bytes get, uh, get, uh, gets passed along to the web server and, uh, and serviced. And again, you see, you know, half the code is just the, the error handling. So, I mean, I think you can make it easier with a check error to use a, a, a check error function, but otherwise there's not much magic. So that's pretty much, uh, there's no magic. That's not, not so, uh, so, but why would you use Go? So, for example, and the great feature about using Go, even if it's a little verbose with the error handling, is 
you get a super fast code. So Go is super fast. And compared, compared to C, to other systems programming language, it's actually uh, less, less code. So if you compare it to Python, you know, there's more error handling and more verbose code. But if you compare it to C code, like how would you add a, a, a web server in C and, and so there are no standard libraries. So compared to C, it's actually super uh, easy. And the real part is, you know, you don't need a virtual machine. That's compared to Java. If you would do it in Java, you have to use all, like it needs lots of memory and it's a virtual machine. But in, in Go, it, they create standalone binaries. And the standalone binary includes everything. So in this case, it would include the SQLite database and it would include the web server. And to deploy it, all you have to do to upload the executable. And again, the, the headline feature is the concurrency, which in this case, the concurrency works for your web server, which makes it fast. And the other headline feature is the super fast build. So go if you build it compared to C++. If you have big, lots of source code, it, the build is super fast. In this case, it's, uh, it's kind of with the SQLite database. It's not working because the SQLite database module is actually C code. And, uh, and then it, it has to just a wrap around the C code. And then it have to, has to use a GNU comp C compiler to compile the um, SQLite extension. But otherwise, it's super fast, the build. And yeah, there's another, anybody knows the How I Start website? So the How I Start website. is uh, getting started with all kinds of languages, C++, Ruby, uh, Haskell, and there's how I start with Go. And if anybody's interested in building a web service, so this uh, web service shows uh, he's not using a database, but he's using a, a weather service, and he's fetching the, the weather forecast from a city, and then republishing the web weather service Within, with his own uh, web service. But, and so there's a, a, a nice little uh, making the web server and uh, the JSON service and so on and so forth. Yeah, so there's really not lots of magic. That's pretty much, uh, yeah. And, and the code, if you want to look at the code, it's actually the code is online for the tiny web service. Okay, so so that's the um, the Go version, and there's the server. So there's not really, a, so it's super fast to build, you know, fast web services in Go. And usually what you would do for the routing to use a, a library, there's a Gorilla, Chai, and there are so many different, you know, libraries. So, yeah, a any questions or? Yeah, thanks. Sorry.